So today we're going to be looking at the r slash civ subreddit and looking at a post I posted the other day. I got quite a few votes, almost 4,000 votes, and it still has a day left. We had 156 upvotes for it. And the question was, which is your least favorite win type? Comment why. Essentially, I just wanted to know what the community kind of wanted out of their games. And so this was asked for all kind of Civ players. There is almost half a million users of the subreddit. There's only about like one and a half to 4,000 users online. There's a lot of memes posted. There's a lot of cool videos posted. There's a lot of cool um, just discussions going on too. So if you ever have a question for Civ, sometimes this is a good place to go too. So go ahead and leave the comment down below. Let me know what you guys think would be the most voted type. I voted personally for domination. Sometimes I have some issues with domination. It just gets old real quick for me personally, but I would I would like to hear everyone else's opinion as well. The community even has posted the following results. And before we get to the results, guys, be sure you're subscribed down below. A lot of you aren't. Less than 40% of you are. Also, while you're down there, there's a little thumbs up button. Go ahead and click that because you're awesome. This video is awesome. And here are the results. 664 for domination, 430 for culture, 1.1k for religious victories, 782 for diplo, 400 for science, and 781 for score. I said I guess I'll put this here mainly because I didn't know how many people actually got score victories. Uh, it's something that I don't think I actually have gotten in Civ 6. It's one of those events where I think score victories are on the higher difficulty settings harder to get to because getting to those last couple turns, usually the AI will win before those uh, 300 turns any or 500 turns on standard settings. My friend 100 games 100 days or goes by Sarge mentioned that in one of his discord posts to me where it was just one of those things where it's really hard to achieve that score victory or something you really don't strive for. But what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and look at um, some of the comments posted some of the reasons why and talk about why religious was voted the least favored win type of the six civ six community it's actually not too bad of a spread if you look there's 4.1 votes a quarter of them for religious out of six that means there's an even spread that people don't like at least one victory type at least so it's kind of interesting to see that. The culture and science actually surprised me with how many they had. I did see a lot of things for science where it's people were worried about the end game in science taking too long. I, I don't know how I feel about that. As I've had more and more experience with Civ 6 and gotten better and better, I don't see that as much of an issue anymore because I know the strategies on how to make that a lot easier and how to make those, uh, prog uh, those like projects go a lot quicker. You do a lot of internal trade routes to your capital, and then you can get like over 200 production in your capital, and then you're just churning out the projects. So the science wins um, t come a lot quicker. So as soon as you get rocketry, you're almost within like 30, 40 turns of winning. Same thing with culture. Culture actually got quite a few votes. Uh, I thought actually is going to get more. So what I thought was culture is one of those things in Civ 6 where almost every other win type supports the culture victory but domination you can go domination to a culture game you can go religion and do a culture game and you can also i don't know you can do science in for culture but i would say you would use your science to get domination to then get culture because none of the things inherently with science actually gives you culture the only thing i could say is if you wanted to get science sci great scientists and do um, get on Tananarevo as one of your city states, become suzerain of them, get extra culture from that. That's, uh, I guess, one way you could do that, uh, get extra great people points for that. But otherwise, science really doesn't contribute much to a culture victory. It definitely helps in getting through your tech tree so you can defend yourself uh, because usually with culture victories, you want to go a little bit more passive unless you're going into a domination type culture victory. The domination win. I was surprised more people didn't vote for this. I do notice that like it's really popular in multiplayer, so maybe that was why. So the Civ 6 community is made up of people who play single player, only multiplayer. It's uh, but if I was thinking 
if you struck from a completely uh, versus AI standpoint, it's hard to fight wars on like two fronts or three fronts or anything more. Uh, you very much can, but it's really hard to do a lot, lot more. I'd say a lot of play people, especially more inexperienced Civ players, would get walled pretty quickly, literally sometimes, where they come up against an AI and then they're going to war, going to war, and then they reach this mark where the AI has put up like renaissance walls instead of their ancient walls or one turned the walls and now their their warriors and archers aren't going to be able to take that city down a big one is just a research machinery and upgraded all their archers to crossbowmen that's a big one too that's usually met as well i'm curious how many people have experienced that i'm wondering how much out of the 664 would actually feel that way the Diplo win, we're actually going to get to the religious win last. I think we'll cover that last and see why that was voted the least favorable win condition or the most hated, if you want to say that, win type. Diplo win. Diplo win is kind of interesting. Diplo wins are very much, in the sense, hard to control, especially if you're not building the wonders like the Mahabodhi Temple and statue of liberty and then there's one more is it pota palace i can't remember i think so but those three wonders along with winning all your congressional world congresses is the only way to win diplo victory there's really not much infrastructure that actually helps you win a diplomatic victory except for getting suzerainty of city states to get you more diplo points so you can secure the ability to win diplomatically that's the only real way you can do that. And then you also need to make sure not going to war with the AI, just trying to make sure you maximize your Diplo favor rather than anything else to maximize your then Diplo points. It's really hard to kind of control that. Once you get to, I think it's 15, I think it's once you get to 15 diplomatic victory points, the AI starts voting against you very heavily. So it almost takes like 40 points to uh, win the World Congresses where you are voting for diplomatic victory points. In that sense, you're almost having to put all yours into that or just vote your, for yourself. So you get minus two, but then since you voted for yourself correctly, you get plus one. So it's a negative one. And then hopefully you win the other two world congresses that are in those world congresses. So you get a plus, uh, plus one. <laughs> but then it's like a snail climb so essentially the end game becomes waiting for the next world congress after you've built all your wonders which is kind of in my mind pretty stale but diplo victories can be interesting it's it's something you can't really compete with the ai about though that's the only hard thing is just that you're either winning a diplo victory or you're not going to be anywhere close i think diplo victory is one of those things you could I, I would be aiming for another victory type and then go for a diplo victory diplo victory is really not something i usually keep in mind as the one I want to go for at the very beginning. I would say of the victory types I would go for from the very beginning, it's going to go domination, culture, religious, and science. And then Diplo and score is one of those ones I'd go for afterwards. Um, it's like an afterthought in my mind. It's not one of the front runners that I would choose. Next, uh, science got the least amount of votes, which I actually expected. Science is usually one that people really enjoy. The thing about science uh, wins is that uh, the nice thing about science wins is that you could do a domination into a science win. You can also go ahead and, and just do an outright science win. But the nice thing about having all that science is you're going to have the most advanced units. You're going to have the ability to get up things pretty quickly. Because usually with science wins, you're trying to go for things like industrial zones, trying to get a lot of production, and trying to get really good campuses. And with those great campuses, you can also get good bonuses or even dedications towards the end i think it's free inquiry where your or heartbeat of steam where some of your science buildings give you production as well which is really really cool in the end game and it's one of those dedications that you always gravitate towards when you have a science victory and then score victory score victory is one of those ones of i've never gotten a score victory but then again when I started playing Civ, I started playing on the medium settings and very quickly ramped up to the, the DD setting. And I've been playing the DD setting ever since. So the score victory is not something I've ever actually gone for or achieved. But there's some comments down below that almost changed my mind on this. So we'll visit those here in a second. And lastly is the religious victory type, the most hated win type in Civ 6, as voted by the community. I can definitely see why a lot of people don't like it. Through my experience in gameplay, I have noticed that the religious win type is one of the ones that I could, you could very most reliably do. 
it is the easiest victory type to achieve out of all of these, and it requires very little infrastructure beyond holy sites. You can just do holy sites in each one of your cities, and then you don't need to build any other infrastructure, and you'd be fine, because faith generation does not depend upon production, does not depend upon, and it does depend on food. Um, I would say food is one of those things that I can depend on, but other than that, if you just have a city with a good, good holy sites, then you're doing fine. You can win with just the holy sites, and they don't even have to be great holy sites. So you can just get a lot of mediocre uh, plus one or plus zero holy sites and just have a bigger empire, like 10 cities, and just churn out a bunch of religious units. You can advance that super quickly by getting extra adjacency holy sites. But it, it, it was very interesting for me to see that 1.1k, or a fourth of the total vo votes, went towards religious victory types. Very, very curious to see that. And I want to kind of look at the, some of the comments and see what people said. And there's this one that uh, really changed my opinion on the score victory type. And I want you guys to let me know if it did it for you as well. So this one's a pretty long one. So this is most, I got it sorted by top comments. So religion is by far, it's just so damn tedious. And then you're just clicking unit after unit for all your religious units. Uh, you can argue that domination is very similar. Kind of the same thing where you're just clicking and micromanaging your units as they go through. And then diplomacy kind of sucks. Yeah, I kind of get that as well. Where world congresses are so arbitrary, you kind of have to know exactly what to vote for and maximize your points. Yeah, so it's pretty much like you're pretty much scumming it. You know exactly what there is to do. Not an end game. There's nothing... Nothing you have to do there. So I kind of agree with that. I, th I think the religious victory is definitely the easiest, but you can have very interesting religious victories where say if you had another religious city, uh, a religious civilization. So say if you had like Gandhi, Basile II, Eleanor, she tends to have a lot of faith too, uh, or is pretty driven towards faith. Having them actually makes, makes those religious games kind of fun. I try to mix up my religious games by going ahead and not using all the charges on my apostles and sending us a ball of apostles to go kill other apostles and missionaries and gurus and stuff. I really love that. One thing that he said, and gurus just aren't worth the faith that costs to produce. I would actually highly argue against this. I think that gurus are probably one of the most important units if you have a ball of apostles going around and killing other apostles and missionaries, where those gurus are helping helping heal all of your units. What I tend to do is like space out my apostles like five tiles away everywhere from my guru. And then if anyone needs healed, I just bring them back to the apostle, uh, to the guru and then heal it. And also that's a really good way to defend your gurus from un attacking apostles if that one sneaks through your defense. So it's kind of, I like it a lot because it's kind of like a, a, a weird mix of domination and attacking and everything like that. It's it, it's really interesting to see and I really enjoy it. Religious is one of those ones where I actually don't see it as too bad, but I do, I do agree if you're a standard player and just getting into the game, it's very much one of those things where it just seems like you're just hurting apostles, building them, sending them out in the world, and hoping that they do well. And then if not, it's, yeah, he says it, convert them through sheer attrition. Um, one of the next comments struck me different. People complain that the game isn't actually about building the strongest civilization, but about speedrunning a win condition, then hate on score. Y'all realize score victory is exactly that, right? By the way, you win by just having fun and building a killer civ. This is something that really, really spoke to me. It was one of those items where I did not think about that for the longest time. And score victory is one of those ones that at the higher difficulties is a lot harder to achieve because usually the AI is going to win before your turn counters up. On the deity setting, you have civilizations winning like at turn 300 from either culture or, dom or, or domination, uh, not domination usually, but either culture or scientific wins or even religious victories by then. So score victory is actually really tough in that sense. Whereas I could see definitely on the lower settings or on more, if you're just playing the game to build a really cool sieve, then yeah, score victories makes sense. They really make sense for more of the casual fan base. And if you're just playing the game for fun, like that seems like the best victory to get type to go for because you're just building this humongous empire and then you want to make sure that you have the most points. I can completely say that as a vi completely viable way of playing is so you just want to have fun with it. I think once I got to the deity setting, I was like, okay, 
I want to min-max this build, make it so much improved, and get good victory conditions, stamp out the AI, not have to worry about them at all. And so I started min-maxing. So when it came to score victory, by the time I would get to a score victory, I would have won like 100 turns beforehand if I went for another victory type. I feel like score victories, the one thing about it is you get a little see literally everything in your empire. If you wanted to have a civilization that had a city for culture, a city for science, a city for economics, this score victory is the type for you in that sense. You know what I mean? You're getting a little bit of everything. You're not great at anything. But you, you've gotten everything in the city, and the city's working well. So I think it's very interesting. I think it's very, very interesting, and this kind of opened my eyes to that score victory and what it means to the player base. Uh, you have people from all walks of life. You have people all throughout the world watching Civ, playing Civ, seeing some of the leaders from their countries, and they're playing differently because of the experiences they've had in life or the things that they want to do or the escape they do from the real world or what they just like doing for fun so it's it's kind of cool to see stuff like this i really wanted to see i put a comment in here i really wanted to see a steam achievement for score victory because i really want to see how many people have actually won a score victory i know i personally haven't and i'm probably going to try it here in the future but it's definitely one of those ones that i i really enjoyed seeing one of the one things that one of the commenters made was that culture used to be his favorite, but now it's broken. New the game, new game modes, having it turned off, and then uh, if it, you want to play past the Renaissance, I definitely agree that the new game modes had made it super easy to have a lot of things contribute to your culture games and makes it a lot more straightforward in the sense of you can get culture from a little bit of everything in your games. You can get it from improvements, you can get it from relics, you can get it from religion, you can get it from monopolies and corporations is a big one, that that bonus there. The heroes can help you with that too. So if you have monopolies and corporations and heroes and you have Maui building you unique luxuries and then Anansi destroying the others, that really can catapult your culture victory really quickly. But yeah, it's definitely definitely one of those ones that sometimes seems a little bit broken at times. It's one of those ones where you can win a lot, lot earlier. I don't know if you guys saw the... Uh, it was an Inquisitive Otter where he did the 60-turn culture victory with just Monopolies and Corporations on where he got these unique luxuries just for his continent and won within 60 turns with Rome. I can't, I can't, I think it was Inquisit Vodder. If it's, if I'm wrong, go ahead and leave a comment down below and make sure that I am uh, corrected. But yeah, that, that's one of those things where I can definitely see it is an issue in the game. And just like I talked into my intro, some of the comments were that there's like, uh, for Diplomatic Victory, let's go ahead and see here. There's one down here. D diplomatic doesn't even, did correlate with Dean Diplomatic. You've gotten them on accident. So someone like here says Diplo, Diplo strikes as meaningless. You don't really have to contribute in anything. And some things like the actual like send aid requests actually kind of cause you to want to destroy the world to be more diplomatic. I, I don't I don't get that part of it. And then there's the funny thing where a lot of people miss the at least and least favorite and accidentally voted for their most favorite. Uh, so I'd say probably about 5% of people actually had that uh, happen to them. Yeah, I think there's about five people who posted on here that they actually accidentally chose the wrong one. I'd say, yeah, probably about five to 10% of this post probably was voting for the wrong thing and they're like, oh crap, didn't mean to do that. So take that with a grain of salt. Let me know your guys' take on what which is the least favorite win type. Uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Uh, be sure to give a like if you enjoyed this video and go ahead and pose a question for me down below too. If you guys want me to pose another question to the Civ 6 community, I'd be happy to do so. But that's going to be it for me today. Go ahead and check out this video up here. It's about a heathen conversion that I did the other day, which was pretty epic. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.